Okay, so this is what we were discussing in the last class. Yes. Many lectures sound is that's because I'm moving there. I can't help it. You have to come to class. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this was uh, the CAS code. This is the output. I apply an input signal here. This is all small signals, so all these grounds that I'm indicating are not really grounds, they are bias voltages. Okay? So this was the CAS code. When I look in from outside, the impedance is large, right? And uh, the transconductance is basically almost equal to the GM of the bottom transistor, so pretty much. Now, what we said is when I make this into a differential system, I assume that this bottom node, this one, is the virtual ground. This was my assumption. Now when I make this assumption, I need a tail current source and I end up with a stack of five transistors. A stack of five transistors each using up about 0.2 volts for their saturation leaves very little for my swing. So if my power supply is of 1.2 volts, I am left with 0.2 volts of single ended peak to peak swing. Okay, so this was the story. Now, can we transform this into a differential picture in a different manner? This is what we were investigating. And when we were doing that, I said that uh, Let's not make that the virtual ground. Let's leave that as ground itself. And let's try to do something else. So and then what I said was, let's leave this alone. This is no longer virtual ground. And what we are going to do is, we are going to add another device over here. We are also going to make this a bias voltage. So we are going to add a second fifth device. I'm sorry. All right. Now, um, what is uh, your name? Siddharth says that this is no different from before. Earlier, I had a stack of four. I make it into uh, fully differential, it becomes a stack of 5. Now also, it will become a stack of 5. Right? So it's no different. No, if I, if I make this a virtual ground now, Now, the interesting thing is, once the output part is set up, does it matter whether this red colored transistor is an NMOS or a PMOS? Could I have done this? could just as well have done this, right? The same analysis as yesterday applies. When you look for the GM, the overall transconductance of the circuit, you apply an input here, okay? It causes GM times V in to come this way approximately and that is uh, this way it sees a high impedance.
this way it sees a low impedance so it's going to prefer to come from the low impedance side right and if you have short circuited this then all of that current is going to come through the short circuit so as a result the short circuit current is going to be approximately gm times v in now how approximate is that approximate you have to work it out right and that also we worked out in the last class all right otherwise this is no different so whether it's an n mos or a p mos it does not matter now let's transform this into the differential structure and what we will do is we are going to consider this node as our virtual ground okay all other nodes are actual grounds or bias voltages so the bottom one is an actual ground the top one is a power supply and uh, all the gate voltages are in bias voltages certain dc bias voltages all right so this is my strategy now tell me if i transform this I can have at the output, and what's the minimum voltage that I can have at the output? So let's say my power supply is uh, how much? Power supply is 1.2 volts. Then my output can swing from 0.4 to 0.8 volts. So now I have doubled my output swing from before. So before it used to be 0.2 volts, now it's 0.4 volts. Single end of kick to kick square. Okay, so effectively I double my output side from the earlier uh, second. Double. That's double. Okay, uh, depends on the power supply. I've increased it by one VDS. VDS. Okay, so this is the folded casting. I want to use NMOS. If I use NMOS there, then I'm going to connect it up here. Okay. If I use CMOS as the input, then I'm going to connect it over there. If I use NMOS as the input, then I'm going to connect it over there. All right. So 
from the point of view of uh, uh, signal swing, output signal swing, this is slightly better than before. Before I had only uh, I had uh, power supply minus four, uh, five times VDS sat. That was my output swing before. And in this case, I have VDD minus 4 VDS. So it's slightly better. What have I lost out? So this is the good news. What's the bad news? So GM has decreased a little bit, RDS also has decreased a little bit. So I have a little lesser gain than before. So uh, smaller output resistance. smaller transconductors. So this transconductance I am going to call it capital G subscript M. Alright? So capital G subscript M is almost equal to small g subscript M. Okay, so I've got smaller transconductance than before, smaller output resistance than before. So as a result, I will get lesser amount of gain than before. Okay, this is bad news. Not very bad news. Okay, it's a little less. Is there any other bad news? If you are going to make an op amp, the input voltage is fixed. This is the input voltage. It's a virtual ground, it's steady, it's constant. So the input voltage is um, not of that great importance. Any other bad news? Okay, we haven't yet done the frequency analysis of this, of either. So let's pause on that. Any other bad news? Earlier, what what I mean? Let's call this uh, I zero. So to get a certain GM, you would have to have a certain I zero, right? Here you still need that I zero over there. Let's look at the DC picture. Where is that I zero? Going? That I zero is splitting into two pieces. So I naught by two is going this way. I naught by 2 is going to go the other way and <coughs> where is that I naught by 2 going to go? It can't go upwards. Okay. 
the current is never going to go upwards, DC current. It's going to go downwards. What about this? Is there any current in this? There's got to be, right? There's got to be some more current in that direction. What do you think? Uh, how much current do you need over here? Assume that all the devices are in the same size, of the same size. What is saturation current? To compare with the earlier one, to get the same output resistance, you needed a certain GM for M2 and M3. Okay, and that GM was coming from a current which was equal to I0 by 2. Let's recall the earlier circuit. I'm seeing a lot of blank faces. I'm not drawing the other half. Okay, so to get the same GM in both the circuits, these this particular current has to be the same. I zero over there also I zero. Assume that N MOS and P MOS have the same mobility. Just make a gen generic assumptions. All right. To make equal comparisons. Alternately, you can make the input stage in MOS for this and connect it to the other side. Fine. Leave it. So, the same current I0 and I0 to get the same transconductors. You now need more or less the same output resistance. To get the same output resistance, what do you have to do? Here, what is the output resistance? Output resistance depends on the RDS of 1 and 2, GM of 2, depends on the RDS of 3 and 4, and the GM of 3. So you have to keep GM and RDS of M2 and M3 the same, and RDS of M1 and M4 the same. Okay? What do you have on the other side? The output resistance here is GM3, RDS3, so you need the same current through M3 and M4 as before. Agreed? You need more or less the same current as before through M3 and M4. M3 and M2, I'm sorry. Oh, I numbered them uh, incorrectly. Okay. So here the current was I0 by 2. So I need I0 by 2 over here as well. Okay, to make a fair comparison. I need I0 by 2 on that branch as well. So what is the total current per branch? I0 by 2 for that branch. I0 for the middle and I0 by 2 for the other branch. So the net power consumption, current consumption is twice I0. Earlier the power consumption was I0. So you have effectively doubled the power consumption. Okay? So we have made a lot of assumptions here and there. But more or less this is true. That your power consumption will be double.
All right. So these are the good news and the bad news. So you get a little more swing, but at the price of double the power consumption. Lot more power consumption than before. Okay, it may or may not be worth it. Okay, so this is the situation that we have. We first of all we made um, so let me try to summarize the story so far. So first we tried to make a one stage differential. I mean very uh, run of the mill operational amplifier. I ended up with a gain of 20, a ceiling of gain of 20. I could not go beyond 20 and my boss was just not happy. So I gave up there. Then I tried to make two stage op amps and I ran into common mode trouble. Okay, I could get a gain up to 400 but my common mode was running away when I put things in feedback, then I found that the common mode is going to two extremes and uh, leaving all the transistors out of saturation and so on, biasing gets completely haywire. So I said that okay, I either need to read a new book chapter for common mode feedback or I am going to abandon this. Okay. Then I tried to make three stage op amps and everyone told me that uh, look, if you manage to make a three stage op amp, you might as well submit a journal paper and uh, get some credit for it. Okay, instead of just leaving uh, your boss. So I gave up there. Because a lot of people have already submitted these papers, there's a lot to read, etc. etc. I gave up. Then I said that okay. So that leaves me with single stage op amps and I need to work on better single stage op amps. So I made the cascode circuit. The cascode circuit was better. Okay. There's no common mode feedback required. There are no frequency problems, presumably. We didn't work on the frequency of the main gain. Okay. But my gain was uh, gain was good, not bad. Gain was about 200. Is that what we saw? Yes. Yeah. Gain was about 200. But um, I was severely limited in terms of my output swing. Okay, if I was born in 1960s and uh, um, I was working on a 1 micron CMOS process, then the cascode amplifier was super. Basically, if, if you have a power supply of 5 volts, great. That's what amplifier is the way to go. Best. So we will make more stable. In that. So put 3 devices in that. Anyway, so um, we were se severely limited in terms of headroom. So then what we did was, we said that let's make something called a folder in that. The folder cascode was marginally better in terms of headroom. It gave me a little more room. So uh, when we are talking about a supply voltage of 1.2 volts, it looked as if the headroom doubled, the output swing doubled. Um, but I paid in terms of the power consumption. Okay. In terms of the gain, the payment is it's a marginal amount of uh, compromise. So earlier the gain was 200, now probably the gain is going to be 119. I don't know. Okay. It's marginal, but in terms of power consumption, I'm paying a big price. Then before. So that leaves me with this is this is the story more or less. This is what we have uh, done so far. So we need to do two things. One, we have to uh, look at the frequency response of the dashboard and make sure that the frequencies are fine. The other is, we need to study this new chapter called common mode feedback. There's no escaping. Okay.
all right so between the folded cas code and the cas code the frequencies uh, as far as the frequency picture goes it's not going to be very different the analysis is not going to be very different so i'm just going to stick to the cas code because you know it's easier to draw Okay, so this is my cas code half circuit, differential mode half circuit. We are only worried about the differential mode. Okay, when we are doing pole zero analysis, that's what we are worried about. All right. Now, where are the pole locations? First of all. Um, you do the short circuit test right and you are going to look in from outside for the impedance so let's first uh, think about the short circuit test let's look at the poles when i'm talking about the transconductance so when i'm talking about the transconductance i'm going to short this out okay basically i'm looking for gm capital gm as a function of s 